Hey guys. Welcome back to my channel. This is part 1. What if Naruto was the strongest wizard in fairy tale? And I know, you guys gonna love this fanfic, but before we start, please do like, and don't forget to use the thousand years of death jutsu on the subscribe button. Now let's start the story. In the kingdom of Fiori at the southern part of the country, there was a large port town known as Harjan, where it was a nice normal sunny day, and inside the town walking down a street was a tall young man who had very muscular and fit body, he had ocean blue eyes, thin eyebrows and messy blonde hair that was tied back into a low ponytail. He had a gold chain necklace that had a green crystal attached, he wore a dark blue turtleneck shirt, black fingerless gloves, grey pants and black shoes, and he was carrying a brown leather bag over his shoulder. This young man's name was Naruto Namikaze, and he was a proud member of one the famous wizard guild known as Fairy Tail, and he was currently on a job which was the reason why he was in Harjan. As Naruto walked down the street he then noticed a group of girls started to form a crowd around something which made him curious, and then he heard someone yelling out the name Salamander and all of the fangirls screaming their hearts out, which made him raise an eyebrow at their actions. Salamander? Is Natsu in this town? But since when has he been so popular with women like Loke? Naruto thought curiously as he started to walk towards where the crowd was being located. As Naruto started to make his way through the crowd of fangirls who were showing hearts in their eyes, making him even more curious, as he made his way to the center making everyone snap out their daydream and got distracted by the sudden appearance of the good-looking blonde, but just as Naruto was about to say something to the person that was in the middle to ask what was going on when suddenly. Someone else came in pushing the fangirls aside and yelled out. Igneal. Natsu said with a big smile on his face, but it soon faded away when he noticed that there were only two people, one of whom he recognized Naruto what are you doing here, and who the heck is this guy? Which made the guy beside Naruto jump up in surprise and Naruto to raise an eyebrow out of curiosity because of his reaction. Well you can call me Salamander, the Salamander replied with a cocky smirk on his face, which made Naruto narrow his eyes, as he knew the Salamander was using a type of magic to make all of the girls fall for him. I can sense that you're using magic on these girls. Naruto asked in a serious tone at the salamander who was starting to sweat nervously, and all of the fangirls were about to attack both Naruto and Natsu for interrupting their great salamander, however the salamander then started to levitate with his fire magic and announced. I must take my leave now, I'm having a boat party at sunset, and hope everyone comes by the salamander replied with a smile and left the area with his magic. That guy almost blew my identity, how the hell did he find out? Well it doesn't matter, I will get all of those girls soon enough. Naruto watches as the salamander leaves before he turns his attention on to Natsu who was grinning at him. So what are you doing here in Harjin Naruto? Natsu asked curiously. Standing next to Natsu was a small blue cat with a white stomach, and his name was Happy who was Natsu's teammate. I we didn't know you would be at Harjin as well said Happy. I'm here on a job request, said Naruto. What's the job? Happy asks curiously. If I'm going to tell you too then we might as well go somewhere to get something to eat first said Naruto. Alright I'm starving, Natsu said with a grin. I let's get some tasty fish, Happy said happily. Wait for me guys. I want to say thanks to both of you, they heard a voice call out to them, and as they turned around they saw that it was a young woman, and her name was Lucy. She's hot Naruto thought, looking at Lucy before he realized what she had just said to them. Thank us. Both Naruto and Natsu said as they were both confused. Yeah, I didn't know that I was under a charm spell from that guy, so for my thanks, why don't I treat you three to some food? Lucy said with a smile. At the moment when Lucy said the word food both Naruto and Natsu's stomach started to rumble. Sure we would love to. Natsu said with a goofy grin. At the restaurant. Lucy just stared in shock with her jaw dropping as she watched as one of the two young guys and the blue cat that saved her from the charm spell were eating like there was no tomorrow, while the good-looking blonde-haired guy was eating a large amount of ramen, but with far better manners than the pick-haired guy and the talking cat. Seriously, Natsu can at least try to eat like an adult, said Naruto. Hey Happy, is eating just like me? said Natsu. Well it's okay for Happy since he's a cat, said Naruto. So what are your names? Lucy asks curiously. My name is Natsu Dragneel, and this here is Happy, Natsu said before keeping eating what they have left on the table. I Happy said simply as he continued eating his fist. I'm Naruto, Naruto said with a smile. I'm glad that I know your names, and I just wanted to say thanks as you both saved me from the salamander, he was using a charm spell which is illegal here in Fiori. That's really disgusting, to be honest Lucy explained. Well then it was a good thing that Natsu and I appeared to interrupt him and free you from his charm spell, Naruto said in a happy tone, receiving a nod from both Natsu and Happy. I know that I may not look like it, but I'm a wizard too, Lucy said proudly. Is that so? Natsu said while still eating. 
yeah, but I haven't joined a wizard guild or anything yet, oh I guess I should probably explain about them first, well you see a guild is an organization where wizards are employed and receive information. Wizards won't be considered to be full-fledged until they become a member of a guild, but there are so many guilds all over the world and I heard that it's really difficult to get into the super popular ones, and the guild that I want to join is the most popular one there is. Ah, they're the greatest and they are always sorcerers weekly. Oh I hope I can actually convince them to let me join them. That would be amazing, Lucy said excitedly. She's talking a lot about this guild, but she hasn't told us which one it is, perhaps it's our one. Thought Naruto. You sure do talk a lot, said Happy. When I was in the crowd, I heard you shout someone's name Natsu. Lucy asks curiosity. We're looking for Igneal, said Happy. We heard a rumor of someone calling themselves Salamander in this town, so we decided to come check it out if it was actually true, but unfortunately, it wasn't him, Natsu said annoyed. Yeah that salamander doesn't really look like a real salamander you know Natsu, said Happy. Yeah no kidding, I bet that guy can't breathe fire like a real dragon, said Natsu. Ah I don't get it your friend Igni looks like a dragon, Lucy said confused. No you got it all wrong he doesn't just look like a dragon he is one, said Natsu. Aye, Igneal is a real-life fire dragon, said Happy. Why would you think a fire dragon would show up in the middle of town? And even if he did it would have started a mass panic and then you would know for certain he was here. Lucy shouted at them for their stupidity. Sign seriously Natsu you need to think first before rushing into these things as Lucy does have a point as if Igneal was here, it would have caused a panic, seeing a real-life fire dragon, said Naruto. Well I should get going enjoy the rest of your lunch, and maybe I'll see you around, Lucy said as she started to stand up and walk away however when she was near the exit, she noticed Natsu and Happy on their knees, saying thank you multiple time making her embarrassed, and yelling at them to stop, while Naruto just shake his head at the scene in front of him. Later that night time. Sometime after Lucy had left them at the restaurant Naruto told Natsu and Happy that he would see them later, and he went to explore the rest of Harjin town by himself, to find out more about something which was the reason why he was in Harjin, but before he knew it it went dark, so he decided to look for a hotel to stay for the night. However suddenly he heard a loud explosion which came from Harjin town port, and when he turned his head towards it, he saw something unexpected which was a large tsunami, and a yacht that was being pushed by the large tsunami, and it was heading straight for Harjin, which made Naruto worry about someone getting hurt by it. Wind magic. Flight. The light blue magic spell appeared underneath Naruto, who then took off into the sky and flew towards the tsunami, Naruto took a big breath of air, where another light blue magic seal appeared in front of him. Great wind breakthrough, it's the wind style. Great breakthrough jutsu from Naruto. Naruto unleashed a big burst of wind from his mouth at the tsunami dispersing it, and then he used his wing to slow the yacht's fall to the ground, so it would land safely, instead of just crashing. Do large tsunamis happen often at this tower or something, Naruto said to himself. As Naruto looked down he spotted Lucy and Happy nearby who were looking up at him with Lucy having a look of shock on her face, while Happy was just smiling. Wow. Naruto. How did you do that? Lucy shouted in shock. That's Naruto for you, he's super powerful said Happy. Once the yacht was back on the ground Naruto flew back down where many people were staring at him with amazement, as they have never seen someone destroy a large tsunami and stop a yacht from crashing. Naruto then spotted the salamander guy from before with many other guys around him, and then saw Natsu standing on top of the yacht, looking angrily at the salamander guy. So you claim to be a member of the fairy tale huh, Natsu said angrily. So what's it to you, go get him men. The salamander ordered. Yes sir all of Salamander's men said in unison. Let me get a closer look at your face, Natsu said as he grabbed his red jacket. As the Salamander's men charged at Natsu to try to knock him out, but with one swing of pressure, he knocked them out cold and even took his red jacket off revealing a dark red tattoo that was located just below his right shoulder. My name is Natsu Dragneel, and I am a fairy tale wizard and I have never seen you before. Natsu yells angrily which causes the Salamander to become even more nervous since all his thugs were out cold. I can't believe it he's really from the fairy tale guild, Lucy said to herself in shock. Yep, so is Naruto and I happy said as he removed his backpack, revealing his fairy tale symbol which was white, while Naruto removed his right glove, showing that he had a fairy tale symbol which was on the back of his hand and was orange. Seriously? Lucy shouted in shock before she realized something and stared at Naruto. Wait then that must mean you're Naruto Namikaze, the Sky Emperor of Fairy Tale, Lucy said, amazed as she had read about him from the Sorcerer magazine, but it never showed a picture of him however it did say that he was handsome. They weren't lying about him being really good looking, Lucy thought with a small blush on her face as she stared at Naruto. 
The thug that was standing next to Salamander confirmed that Natsu was in fact a member of the Fairy Tail Guild because of the dark red tattoo he had and revealed that the Salamander's true name was Bora, which Happy began explaining that Bora was exiled from another guild called Titan Rose for bad behavior. That's the guy I'm after, apparently he took something important from the guild master of Titan Rose, and the job request is to get it back said Naruto. I have no idea what you're trying to do here buddy and I don't care if you're a good guy or bad guy or whatever. I am not letting you dirty the fairy tale guild name. Natsu said angrily as he started to walk towards Bora. And what exactly are you going to do about it, stop me. Said Bora. Providence typo. The red magic appeared in front of Bora, and out from it were purple flames that went straight at Natsu, who was just standing still waiting for the oncoming attack, with a smirk of confidence on his face. Natsu? Lucy shouted in worry. However Natsu then did something that surprised everyone, not Happy and Naruto obviously, which was that he started to eat Bora flames, and which made Lucy and everyone's jaw drop from the fantastic display they watched but couldn't believe it. So this is your fire magic. It tastes so disgusting said Natsu. What the hell are you? Bora asked in fear as he took a step backwards. Natsu doesn't get affected by fire because he's a dragon slayer wizard. He can breathe, eat and absorb any kind of fire, it's a lost magic that was created to fight against fire dragons, Happy explained to Lucy, who was also curious about what magic Natsu used. So in short he's the worst person for any fire wizard to fight against, Naruto said with a smile. Fire dragon roar. Natsu let out a large stream of fire from his mouth at Bora and his last thugs which took him however, as well as half of Harjan town. Wow, he's really destructive. Lucy said in shock as she looked at all the damage that Natsu's fire dragon roar had caused. Yep he's always like this, Naruto said, shaking his head as he knew Natsu is going to get in trouble with the master for all of THS. Ah yeah that's Natsu for you. Happy replied happily. Afterwards many armored guards came and made their way, yelling what has happened here. And asking people who had caused all of the destruction which made Natsu nervous, so he quickly grabbed both Lucy and Naruto by their hands, then began to drag them as he ran away from the army, with Happy flying behind them. Natsu, where are we going? Lucy asked nervously since they were now being followed by the army. You said you want to join Fairy Tail so I'm taking you there, said Natsu. Natsu, I can't complete my job now, so you owe me one, said Naruto. Yeah sure thing man, said Natsu. Then you better hold on to Happy, Naruto said as he grabbed Happy by his backpack and handed him over to Natsu. Wait. Naruto, are you going to do what I think you're going to do? Natsu asks curiously while taking Happy from Naruto. Just hold him tightly okay Naruto said before he grabbed both Natsu and Lucy under his arms. Naruto, what are you going to do? Lucy asks curious and a bit worried. Hope you ain't scared of heights, Lucy Naruto said before he took off into the sky, leaving the army that were chasing them behind in shock, while well they could hear yelling which was coming from Lucy as she was terrified. Chapter 2. Welcome to Fairy Tale. In the kingdom of Fiori at the large town known as Magnolia, there is a large building that has an orange flag hanging on it, and there was a lot of noise coming from within it, which was normal as it was the Fairy Tale Guild Hall, and standing outside of it was three of its members Naruto, Natsu and Happy, and with them was Lucy who wished to become a member of their famous guild. Wow. It sure is big. Lucy said excitedly as her dreams were finally becoming true. Here it is Lucy, Natsu said happily. I welcome to our guild hall, Happy said happily. Home sweet home, Naruto said with a happy smile. Suddenly Natsu kicked open the guild hall double doors wide open and shouted loudly and happily, hey everyone. We're back. Which caught everyone who was inside their attention. Oh Naruto, Natsu and happy welcome back, Marahin said happily like she always does. You really went overboard against. We read in the paper that you destroyed half of Harjan's harbor, a guy said however Natsu instead answering him just jumped up in the air and then kicked a guy who was drinking a beer in the head, which sent him flying across the guild hall. Why the heck did you do that for Natsu? Lucy shouted in confusion. Seriously Natsu? You're not even back for a minute and you're already picking a fight with someone? Naruto said, shaking his head while also telling himself that he shouldn't be too surprised as after all, this is Natsu after all. There it is, the minute Natsu gets back, the place is in danger of going to pieces again, Marahin said with a light chuckle. What the hell Natsu? What was that for? The guy shouted angrily as he picked himself off the floor. That's for giving me that crappy info about the salamander. Natsu said angrily. Hey don't be blaming me for just passing along a rumor that I overheard. The guy said angrily. It was only just a rumor. I'm going to kick your ass. Natsu shouted angrily. You want to fight about it? bring it on the guy shouted angrily. When everyone else saw this instead of trying to stop the two they all started a rumble and just started beating each other up, which will most likely having their guild hall being torn up again. 
Now now Natsu I think you really show. Before the blue talking cat could finish his sentence someone was pushed backwards knocking into Happy, causing him to send him flying across the guild hall. While all of that was going on Lucy meanwhile was looking around and said to herself happily because her dream was finally coming true. Wow, I just can't believe that I'm actually here, Lucy said happily. Oh my newcomer said Marahin. Lucy just stared at Marahin Strauss with hearts in her eyes, because Lucy was a huge fan of Marahin's, as she has seen her often in the sorcery magazine, as its number one model because of her. Hi ah. I can't believe it. It's actually Marahin Strauss Lucy said in amazement. Did you miss me? Naruto said with a smile as he walked up Marahin. You know I did, Marahin said with a sweet smile before pulling him into a deep kiss, which caused many of the men to stop fighting one another and glare at Naruto in envy, while Lucy only watched in shock and was blushing madly however Lucy's thoughts quickly turned back towards the fairy tale guild members who were still fighting among themselves, um, don't you think you should probably stop? Them? Lucy asked. Oh don't worry about all of this, as this kind of thing happens all the time around here, Marahin said with a sweet smile. During the fight someone had thrown a bottle hoping to hit the person that they were in the middle of fighting against, but they ended up missing them, and it was going to fly past Lucy and hit Marahin on her head, however Naruto managed to catch it just before that could happen. You know they really should be more careful with what they're throwing around, Naruto said before he went to get a seat at the bar to get a drink. Thanks for the save Naruto, Mira said with a smile. Lucy then continued to watch the fight between members of Fairy Tail unfold until something caught her attention, as on the other end of the bar, there was a woman who drinking straight from a barrel, and that woman's name was Kana Alberona. You say that Natsu is back. Where he is. It's time that we finally finish things once and for all, Grey Fullbuster said as he marched into the fight while only in his underwear. Grey, your clothes are gone again, Kana said before she took another slip from her drink. What the hell? Where have my clothes gone? Grey shouted, but that didn't stop him. I swear all the men around here don't have any class, it's why I don't date any of them, Kana said before chugging down a barrel full of alcohol without a care in the world. Well it's a good thing that you're already dating someone then, Naruto said as he walked to the bar. Yep as sure as Kana said with a smile before pulling him into a deep kiss as well shocking Lucy even more. Wait, what's going on? I thought Naruto was dating Marahin Lucy asked confused while thinking about that maybe Naruto wasn't a nice guy like she had thought. Oh we are but he's also in a relationship with two others as well, Marahin said as she appeared next to her. He's dating three people at the same time. Lucy thought in shock while she knew that there were people who dated multiple people at once and even married, simply because that person was from a famous family with a strong magical bloodline, where many powerful wizards comes from. Come over here right now Natsu and fight me. Gray said as he kicked someone who was in his way which sent them flying across the guild hall. No way not until you put your damn clothes back on, Natsu said as he was still beating up the same guy at the start of the fight. This is disgusting. They aren't babies, they shouldn't be screaming and making noise continuously. If you're a man, let your fists do the talking. Elfman said as he marched towards Natsu and Gray. I wouldn't do that if I was you Elfman Naruto warned the larger man, but it was too late as both Natsu and Gray turned around. You're just in the way. Natsu and Grey both shouted as they punched Elfman straight in the face together, which sent him flying across the guild hall. They took him out so easily. Lucy cried out in shock. You can't say I didn't try to warn him, Naruto said before taking a sip from his drink. What a disturbing racket, Loke said to the two girls that were sitting on his lap. It's Loke. One of the top ranking men for the wizard I'd like to be my boyfriend. Lucy said surprised as she wasn't expecting to meet him on her first day joining Fairy Tail. But just then something came flying and hit Loke on his forehead knocking him over. Are you alright Loke? One of the two girls asked, worried. Loke then picked himself up and walked towards the fight, not before he turned around to the two girls, I'm going to join the fight, but only to protect you two of course, Loke said, which caused the two of them to blush madly. Good luck Loke they both said at the exact same time. Lucy meanwhile had the Sorcery Weekly magazine in her hands, and she was on the part about the 10 most eligible bachelors in Fiori, and it had Loke's face and another young man who had blue hair and a red tattoo on his face in it, and while it didn't show his picture, it also had Naruto in it, and Lucy then drew a big cross over Loke's face with a red pen. He's definitely off my list, what the heck is wrong with these people? Lucy said as she watched the fight continue. Suddenly Grey was standing next to Lucy, and this time he was now completely nude, which caused Lucy to both blush and try to cover her eyes with her hands. Give me back my underwear you jerk. Grey demanded while Natsu was grinning and spinning Grey's underwater around his finger. Grey then spotted Lucy excuse me miss, but may I borrow your underwear? Grey asks like it was the most normal thing in the world, but then Lucy out of nowhere had a bat in her hands which she used to smack Grey sending him flying, 
But then Loke appeared right next to her, and he had Lucy in her his arms. These guys are so incentives they don't know. Before Loke could finish his sentence Elfman came in and punched Loke sending him flying. Real men speak with their fist Loke. Elfman said proudly, but then Natsu appeared and he kicked Elfman in the chest, sending him flying. I told you to stay out of this. Said Natsu. I, said Happy. There it's so noisy in here so much for having a drink in peace, Kana said, who had just finished drinking a barrel of beer and now was drinking from a beer mug. Anna then pulled out a card and told everybody, I think that's enough you guys it's about time you stop then a greenish teal magic circle appeared in front of her. Oh yeah, says who. Gray said as he went into a stance and placed his left hand in a fist on his right hand palm, and then a very light blue magic circle appeared in front of his hands. Elfman roared with his right arm pointing upwards, and his hand opened, then a small purple magic circle appeared above it, which then grew and covered his entire right, and then his arm was turned into a rock-like shape instead. You pucks can be so annoying, Loke said as adjusted his ring on his left hand index finger, and then a green magic circle appeared in front of it. Am I going to have to calm you all down before you all end up bringing the entire guild hall down? Naruto said with a smile as a red magic circle appeared in front of his right hand, and a light blue magic circle appeared in front of his left hand. I'm really for all of you Natsu said with a grin as both of his fists were covered in flames. Do they always fight like this? Lucy said as she held Happy right in front of her face, hoping to protect herself. Oh yeah they do this all the time said Happy. But you don't seem worried at all. Lucy asks curiously. However before any of them could unleash their spells a huge shadow demon-like man appeared in the middle of them. All of you are acting like children. Not wizards of fairy tale. The giant shouted before he slightly turned his head and looked at Naruto who was currently drinking Naruto, were you seriously going to join in all of this messing around? You could have ended up doing more damage than everyone combined. The giant asks. Oh there was a fight going on here, oh sorry master, I guess I was distracted, Naruto said with a smile which caused many people to gain a sweat drop. Lucy then realized what Naruto had just said, wait a minute did Naruto just say master Lucy asked in shock. The giant then looks down at Lucy, causing her to freeze in fear him and who's this? The giant asked curiously. This here is Lucy, master and she wishes to join our guild, said Marahin. Is that so? The giant asked. Yes sir Lucy let out a squeak of fear. Well then, just a moment the giant said before he then started to shrink until he was nothing more than an extremely short elderly man, nice to meet ya. He's so tiny, so this little guy is really the master? Lucy asked as he wasn't expecting that. Yes I am, I'm Akarov Dreyer, I'm the guild master here, so you want to join Fairy Tale, do ya? Well we always welcome anyone to join our family, Makarov said with a proud smile. Yeah I always wanted to join the Fairy Tale guild, it's been my dream for years said Lucy. Well then welcome to Fairy Tale, my dear said Makarov. Makarov then did a backflip up to the ceiling and was about to land on the rail of the second floor, but instead he hit his head as he picked himself up and he then brought out a thick stack of papers and waved it at them. You done it again you fools look at these documents that I received from the wizard council, Gray good job dealing with the smuggling organization, but after you walk around completely naked afterwards said Makarov. Hey it isn't my fault. Gray said who had managed to get his underwear back from Natsu. Elfman your last mission was to escort a VIP, but instead you ended up assaulted him during the mission, said Makarov. He said a real man should focus on education instead of getting stronger, Elfman said as he flexed his muscles. Honey you drank 15 barrels of alcohol, but then you charge it to the council, said Makarov. Damn they found that out, Kana said before she continued her drink. Loki, will you stop flirting with the council member's elder granddaughter, said Makarov. I don't see any problem with that, Loki said a smile. Natsu oh my boy the amount of damage you cause can't even compare to all the others have done, said Makarov. Are most of them about Natsu? Lucy said in shock. You do remember what happened back at Harjan, right? Naruto asked, causing Lucy to chuckle. Makarov started shaking and a shadow overtook his eyes Lucy was afraid that he was getting ready to yell, and she was stricken with fear, as everyone was waiting for what was coming next. The hell with those the magic council idiots. Makarov shouted happily. The shock Lucy could do nothing but stare and only managed to say eh? Now listen up, any power that surpasses reason still comes from reason right? Magic isn't some kind of miraculous power, it is a talent that only works when the flow of energy inside of ourselves and the flow of energy of the natural world work in perfect synchronization. To perform magic one must have both a strong mind and the ability to focus, it should take over your whole being and come pouring out of your very soul. If all we ever do is worry about following rules then our magic will never progress, don't let those blowards on the magic council scare, as you should only follow the path that you believe in cause, that's what makes the fairy tale guild number one in all of Fiori. 
Makarov said proudly and the whole guild erupted in cheers right there, and then Lucy knew that she picked the best guild to join. Afterwards Marahan took Lucy over to the bar where she then brought out a stamp, and she asked Lucy where would like her guild mark, and what color does she want it to be which Lucy said she wanted it on the back of her right hand, and she wanted it to be pink. Yeah you go Lucy, you are now an office member of the fairy tale guild welcome, Marahan said with a sweet smile. Lucy looks at it with a smile before she then walks over to Natsu and Happy, who were looking at a request broad. Natsu look Marahan gave me my guild mark of fairy tale, Lucy said happily. Yeah that's nice Luigi Natsu said, not looking away from the request board. It's, Lucy. Lucy shouted angrily. Did he seriously forget her name? Naruto thought as he walked up to Natsu, Lucy and Happy. Are you already deciding on which job to do next Natsu? Naruto asked. Yeah, but I can't just pick which one I want to do though, said Natsu. You know Natsu, you really should just relax sometimes, said Naruto. No way man that would be so boring, said Natsu. In that case then perhaps you could do some training then if you're that bored, said Naruto. I'd do some fishing to get me some yummy fish, said Happy. You have fish on the mind 24-7 don't you cat, said Naruto. Why wouldn't I think fish it's delicious? Happy said as he began drooling about eating some fish. Meanwhile Makarov was sitting on the bar counter and was drinking a beer, until a worried little boy begged him to help his father, who was another member of Fairy Tail, and the reason why he was asking for help was because his dad still hasn't returned from the job. But master the job is supposed to be a simple one, but my dad still hasn't returned yet, said the boy. Romeo, you should have more faith in your father, after all his is a skill wizard and a member of Fairy Tail. after all, said Makarov. But he could be in danger. Said Romeo. I'm sure he's fine, said Makarov. You're being stupid. Romeo shouted before he threw a mug at Makarov's head knocking him over and then running out of the fairy tale guild hall. Why that little Makarov muttered under his breath as he picked himself back up onto the bar counter. That poor kid, Lucy said to herself with a sad look in her eyes, that's gotta be tough. Don't worry about it Marahin assured her, I know that it may sounds like the master doesn't care, but he's actually really is worried. Suddenly Natsu punched the request broad, then he grabbed his bag and walked towards the double doors, with Happy following behind him. What was that about? Lucy asks curiously. Well you see fathers are a very touchy subject for Natsu, Naruto said as he could understand as it was for him as well with his own father leaving him. You see Natsu's father Igniel disappeared leaving Natsu behind, and Natsu has been looking for him ever since, said Marahin. How sad said Lucy. Just then Lucy ran to catch up with Natsu and Happy. I hope they find Macro soon, Marahin said worriedly. Knowing Natsu without a doubt, but there will also be a lot of destruction that's for sure, Naruto said with a smile, while Makarov had a look of despair, as he knew that Naruto wasn't wrong. It was just a normal day at the fairy tale guild hall where people were talking, eating and drinking with each other, but the only difference being was that Master Makarov wasn't around, and the newest member of fairy tale Lucy was looking over the request board for a job to earn some money to pay for her rent. If you find anything that interests you, just let me know since Master Makarov isn't here today, said Marahin. Where is Master Makarov anyway Mira? Lucy asks curiously. Meanwhile Naruto who was sitting down at a nearby table next to Kana who was drinking while Naruto was eating his breakfast, he's probably at his regular old man convention, Naruto said which earned him a couple of chuckles from Kana and a few guild members that happened to overhear what he had just said. However Marahin just narrowed her eyes at Naruto and placed her hands on her hips, then said, now Naruto, there's no need to call it that. The confused Lucy looked over at Marahin and Naruto then asked curiously, what exactly are you guys talking about? Master Makarov is currently at a meeting where all the guild masters from different provinces gather together to report about their guilds, they come together once in a while to meet with each other and catch up Marahin explained. Report my ass. It's just a bunch of old people getting together to play bingo or gamble, Naruto said with a small grin on his face. Come on Lucy, hurry up and pick our next job already, Natsu said with his hands behind his head. Happy was floating next to Natsu, aye. We chose the last job without consoling you last time, so now it's your turn to pick our next job. Turning her back on both of them, don't joke around. We're splitting up Lucy declared. Why did she make it sound like they were dating? Naruto thought with a sweat drop. Widening his eyes in surprise, Natsu stared at her and asked why. You wouldn't mind taking in just about any blonde girl, would you? Lucy asks. Natsu scratched the back of his head looking confused, what are you talking about? Well you are right though see she was right after all they didn't need her, but we choose you to be in our team because you're a nice person, Lucy Natsu said, unknowingly causing Lucy to blush. Wow, who knew that Natsu was such a sweet talker? Naruto thought, chuckling to himself. You know you don't have to force yourself to team up with anyone, especially those two, said a voice behind Lucy. 
As she turning around she saw Grey who was once again almost naked as he was only in a pair of boxers and he was standing there like it was the most normal thing in the world and standing next to him was Loke. But the smile on her face, Marahan took it upon herself to inform Grey about a wardrobe malfunction, um Grey your clothes. Feeling a breeze over his body he looked down and noticed that his clothing had disappeared arg. I forgot them again. How can you forget? Isn't clothes like one of the first things that you're supposed to think about when you get up in the morning? Lucy thought confused. Natsu stared at Grey with a disgusted look on his face, what a pain in the ass. Who are you calling a pain in the ass? You Grey shouted angrily. Who do you think? You naughty punk. Natsu shouted angrily. The two immediately started to fight each other, while the other members just watched in amusement, as it was always fun watching those two fight, as they always fraught over the most stupid things. Meanwhile, while all of that was happening, Loke took it upon himself to start flirting with Lucy, you really are stunning. Your beauty is brilliant even through my sunglasses, if I were to take off my shades and look at you with my naked eyes, I'll probably go blind. Lucy already knew the type of guy that Loke was, so she wasn't fooled at all by his charms, then please do take them off then Lucy said as she didn't need a guy like him flirting with her. Putting his both arms on her shoulders he stared at her, and his face sparkled. Hearing the sounds of keys jingling, his eyes saw Lucy's keys hanging from her waist, and his face immediately went pale, wait. You're a celestial mage. He then turned around and ran for his life away from Lucy, this is too cruel a trick of fate. I'm truly sorry, but this is the end of us. But the sweat drop she looked at his retreating form, since when was there us Lucy thought. What was all that about? Lucy asks curiously. Marahan smiled, oh Loke isn't very good at dealing with celestial mages. My best bet is that he tried it on with other celestial mages, but he ended up just pissing them off, and so they summoned their celestial spirits after him, said Naruto. Dot. After a few seconds, they saw Loke come running back in the guild hall, looking even more scared than before. We've got some bad news everybody. It's Urza she's back in town and she's heading right this way. Loke shouted with a terrified look on his face. Almost every single person who was in the hall immediately stopped whatever they were doing and instead started to panic about what's to come and shaking in fear causing Lucy to wonder what kind of person was Urza like to make everyone who a moment ago was taking, drinking and laughing without a care in the world to worry so much. The ground shook and the tremors increased by the second, but eventually it came to a stop and by the entrance of the guild hall stood a single figure, one that they all recognized was Urza Scarlet. Wow she's really beautiful Lucy said surprised as she didn't expect that as she had heard about Urza from Natsu, Grey and Happy when she, Natsu and Happy were returning from their last job and ran into Grey who told them that she was returning soon and from what they describe it, she sounded like a monster. Yeah she really is, Naruto said with smile as he looked at Urza. I have returned. Ezra announced to everyone. Welcome back Urza, Marahin said with a sweet smile. Is Master Makarov here Mira? Ezra asks curiosity and in a serious tone. No I'm afraid not he's at Clovertown attending a guildmaster meeting, Mira replied with a smile on her beautiful face. I see damned it alright everyone listen up. Urza shouted getting everyone's full attention on. Uh oh they're in trouble Naruto thought, chuckling to himself as he knew what was about to happen next. On my way back from my previous job I have overheard more and more problems about members of our guild have been causing trouble, Master Makarov may not care, but I certainly do Urza said with anger in her voice, which almost everyone faced went pale out of fear. Kana stop drinking like that, it's indecent Urza said, causing Kana to stop drinking from the barrel. Vegeta go outside if you want to dance, not in here, Urza told the long brunette hair man. Wakaba either get rid of that dirty habit or at least smoke outside, Urza told another brunette man called Wakaba mine. Nab just pick a job already, it isn't that hard, Urza told Nab Lassero. Macau. Urza called out to the man who was standing next to Wakaba and whose full name is Macau Conbald. As Macau waited for Ezra to tell him off like she has done to all the others, but instead she just closed her eyes and signed like she had just given up. They at least say something. Macau cried out, however he was just ignored. You guys get in so much trouble however I have a lot on my mind today, so instead I'll just move on and say no more, Urza said with her hand on her forehead. Is Naruto, Natsu and Grey here at least? Urza asked anybody. Hey Urza, how have you been? Naruto said with smile which Urza returned. I, said Happy. W we're right Urza g great friends as usual. Aha Grey said with one of his arms over Natsu's shoulder, and their other arm was doing a fist pumping action in the air. I can see that you two are getting along. Good as that it's only natural friends fight each other from time to time, however I am so glad to see you two get along so well, Ezra said with a smile on her face, and her eyes were closed, and she was nodding. W we're still not on the best of terms Grey whisper. A I Natsu agreed. I never seen Natsu act like happy before Lucy said shock. 
The word of advice Lucy, never anger Urza said Naruto. A few years ago Natsu challenged Urza to a fight, but he ended up losing to her, and he was beaten quite badly, Marahin explained. Don't forget she also beaten Grey as well when she saw him walking around town in nothing but his underwear, said Mikau. And there's the time when Lope got punched by Urza when he tried to flirt with her that one time Naruto said while well inside he was angered at what he had just said for some reason. Naruto, Natsu, Grey, I need to ask a favor for the three of you, Urza said, surprising all three of them. As I was returning along the way I overheard a conversation that maybe ended up with things going wrong. I originally hoped to speak with Master about this first, but because he's not here and time is of the essence I need help from all three of you, Urza said shocking not only Natsu and Grey, but everyone else in the hall apart from Lucy, who didn't know why it was so much a big deal and Naruto. Who just nodded his head accepting the request from Urza. Urza. Needs help. Whatever it is it's got to be pretty bad. This is the first time I have ever heard Urza ask help for anything. Naruto, Natsu, Grey and Urza I never would have imagined it, Murahin said, looking shocked. I expect to see all of you at the train station tomorrow morning, Ezra said before picking up the horn and walk out of the guild hall. They might be the strongest team ever formed in fairy tale. Said Murahin. They? Lucy muttered as she stared at the door in shock. The strongest team? She muttered in awe. Lucy, could you do me a favor? Murahin asked kindly. Would you go with them to make sure Natsu and Grey behave themselves? Sure thing Murahin Lucy said giving Murahin the thumbs up. The next day at Magnolia train station. Magnolia's train station is rather peaceful in the morning, Lucy thought. The air around her was so fresh that it made her melt into the bench that she was sitting on. The celestial mage looked around, her face softened when she noticed that the sky was clear with no clouds in sight. Um, what a lovely day Lucy though however her enjoyment was cut short by the two mages in front of her. This sucks, why do I have to be stuck with you? You'll only just slow us down. Natsu growled under his breath as he glared angrily at the dark-haired teen in front of him. Grey, who was doing the same thing shot back, hey, that's my line. If Urza wants help, then I can handle it all by myself, there's no reason for a loser like you to be here. The two brought their faces closer towards each other, and rivalry sparks ignited from their eyes. Then go by yourself. I didn't even want to come. Said Natsu. Grey clenched his jaw, then stay at home, I'm sure Urza will drag your ass back here again anyway. Natsu jerked back a little as he heard Grey, he remembered what happened last time he disobeyed Urza, which him shivered out of fear from the memory, and seeing Natsu's reaction, Grey smirked in victory and began to boast. At that point, Lucy wasn't even listening to them anymore and just sighed. Lucy looked at her side at Naruto who was just reading a book sitting on the bench with her and Happy in the middle between them chewing on a fish right. Do you want some? Happy asked happily, holding the already half-eaten fish in his little paw. Um, no thanks, said Lucy. Good. I wasn't actually going to share anyway, I. Happy chirped. The vein popped on Lucy's forehead, this damn cat. Lucy just signed as she didn't want to try to argue with the cat anyways. She then gazed around as she noticed that everyone was staring at her two arguing guild mates. Sitting back into the bench, Lucy tried her best to stay in silence. Just pretend that you don't know them Lucy, pretend you don't know them, Lucy thought to herself. I bet she's thinking to just pretend that she doesn't know them Naruto thought to herself. Why did you come here Lucy? Happy questioned curiously with his mouth full of fish. His eyes gazed at the sky without any care in the world. Because Marahin asked me to, Lucy mumbled dejectedly. There was no way she could say no to Marahin of all people, she said that I should stop these two from fighting with each other whenever Urza isn't looking. Nobody, be it man or woman, can say no to Marahin with that breathtaking smile of her thought Naruto. You're not doing a very good job at it, Lucy Happy said before taking another bite out of his fish. Quiet you Lucy hissed. He has a point though thought Naruto. So Lucy what do you think about being a member of Fairy Tale, is it everything you imagine? Naruto asked curiously. It's the best, sure it's a lot more destructive Lucy gave a look over at Natsu who was still arguing with Grey, but everyone is super nice like Marahin, Kana and Levi, who I have talk about all the books I've read, Lucy said happily. Yeah those three are always nice to newcomers said Naruto. Just then, a voice that sounded calm and collecting called out. I do apologize for making you all wait too long for me. Lucy, Happy and Naruto all then turn around to see Urza, along with a giant cart behind her, carrying cases filled with her belongings. That's a lot of things Lucy said in shock as she stared at Ezra's belongings. Yeah Urza likes to be prepared for anything Naruto said as he knew that this was what Urza always does for any job or travel she goes on, so you have everything you need. Naruto asked teased. Of course I do, Urza said as she woke up and gave him a kiss. I take it that she's the third person who's in a relationship with Naruto, thought Lucy. And you might be another new member as well. 
I saw you at the guild hall yesterday standing next to Natsuerza asked Lucy. Ah yes. My name's Lucy. Mira asked me to come along so I hope I can help Lucy said while bowing her head. I'm Urza Scarlet, I thought your name sounds familiar. I'd overheard people saying you're beaten a mercenary gorilla, Urza said. Wait what? Naruto thought confused. Not really Natsu did almost everything and he wasn't even an Aper mercenary, it was just a Vulcan possessing Merak Lucy muttered. But that kind of strength on your last job it shows promise considering what we're about to do is quite risky, Urza explained. Are risky? Lucy exclaimed. Naruto looks over at Natsu and Grey, as they had their arms wrapped on each other's shoulders once again and jumping around, trying to look like they're having a good time to prevent Urza getting mad at them. Why don't those two realize that they don't have to act like that, but just don't be mean to each other or start fighting Naruto thought. I don't know what kind of task we're doing Urza, but I want something from you when we get back, Natsu asked Urza. Oh boy. Are you trying to get yourself killed, idiot Grey said, running up behind Natsu as he already knew exactly what Natsu was about to ask Urza. Oh and what is it? Urza asked curiously. I have gotten a lot stronger since last time, I want to fight you when we get back Natsu challenged. Doesn't he realize that Urza has most likely have gotten stronger as well since the last time they fought against each other, Naruto thought as he signed. Meanwhile Urza looked at Natsu with a blank face, Lucy pale at Natsu's request, and Grey's jaw dropped. Well, that's it. He's officially lost it Grey said. That would imply that he had it at some point, Naruto said with a smile which made Grey, Lucy and Happy laugh a bit while a tick mark appeared on Natsu's head. Very well I accept then, once we return back to the guild, we will fight there, Urza said with a smile. Alright. Now I'm all fired up. Natsu shouted while pumping his fists in the air. Let's board the train then shall we said Urza. Nuo. Natsu shouted out in despair. On the way to Onibus train station. Almost everyone in their booth was perfectly calm, except for Natsu who was currently suffering from his motion sickness greatly. Man what a loser, this is how you get after picking a fight with someone. Asked Grey. SH shut up, Natsu managed to say. Betting around must be pretty hard on him said Lucy. Natsu, come over here and sit by me, said Urza. Hey, I, said Natsu. Is she telling me to move? Lucy asks as she switches the place with Natsu where she was sitting in between Naruto and Grey, while Natsu was sitting next to Urza. I'll let you rest, Urza said as Natsu sat by her. Aye. Natsu said before he punched in the stomach by Urza, causing him to lose consciousness and collapse on her lap. That should settle you down a bit, Urza said with a smile. By knocking him out, Naruto said with a sweat drop. You know, now that I've seen Natsu's magic, what kind of magic do you use Urza? Lucy asks curiously. Her magic is beautiful. Blood comes flying everywhere. Happy exclaimed. H how exactly is that beautiful? Lucy said freak out. It's nothing special really, but I think Grey's magic far more beautiful, Urza said. It is. Well I can do more than just attack I guess, Grey said as he put his fist in his left palm and released some magic, when he lifted his fist an ice sculpture of fairy tale was in his palm. Whoa. That's neat. Lucy exclaimed oh. I just noticed this. You use ice and Natsu uses fire. No wonder you two don't get along. It's so simple, it's almost cute said Lucy. Is that so said Urza? Who cares anyway? Grey said embarrassed. Then what about you Naruto what's your magic? I know that it allows you to fly, but what is it exactly Lucy asked curiously. I Naruto's magic is really cool and he's really good at it, said Happy. Really? Lucy said, getting even more curious about it. Indeed it's rather impressive actually Urza said, nodding her head. Yeah it's the reason for his nickname, said Grey. Then what is it? Lucy asks now, extremely curious. It's just wind magic, Naruto said, making it sound like it was nothing special. Aye, but Naruto can do many cool things with it, said Happy. Oh like what? Lucy asks curiously. Like this for example, Naruto said as he opened his left palm and wind start to form around his palm, and then it manifested into a small hawk-like bird compassed of wind streams and with complete avian anatomy, such as wings and talons. Wow. That's incredible Lucy said looking amazed at Naruto's creation. Urza, isn't it about time you told us? What are we supposed to be doing? Grey asked. Our opponents are the Dark Guild, Eisenwald. They intend to do mischief with some magic called lullaby, said Urza. Lullaby? Grey, Lucy and Happy said as they know the word called lullaby. Then, those guy from before said Lucy. Our members of Eisenwald said Grey. I'm guessing that they had run in with some members of Eisenwald Naruto thought. Eisenwald is a guild that once specialized in assassination however the Magic Council has outlawed, said Urza. Yeah we fought them a day before you show up said Grey. What would they want lullaby for? Naruto asks, but he could already tell what it was. 
They want to use it to kill innocent people, and also the leader of Eisenwald is Eriger, Urza said angrily. As Naruto and the group got off the train to began their search for the members of Eisenwald however a certain someone was currently missing from their group. That sure was a long trip, Lucy said while walking as she stretches out both of her arms. Are those guys from the Eisenwald guild even still here? Asks Grey. I don't know but that's what we're going to find out said Urza. However Naruto suddenly stopped walking as he had finally noticed something or a certain someone was missing from their group. Hey guys hold on for a sec, Naruto said causing everyone immediately stopped and wondered why Naruto had suddenly stopped. What is it Naruto? Something wrong? Urza asked curiously. I kind of just noticed something dose anyone knows where exactly Natsu is. Naruto asked just before they all then heard that the train was about departing, and when the train started moving again, they all realized that Natsu was currently still on the train. Somebody get me off this damn thing. Natsu yelled out of a window while everyone was just stood there and watching him depart. Yep, we left him on the train, Happy said as his cross arms. I was too busy telling the story that I completely forgot all about him. What have I done? And I know he's bad with transportation, this is all my fault. Please, would someone hit me for my failure? Asked Urza. Lucy had a look of shock at Urza's request, but she was surprised when she saw Naruto walk over to Urza. Wait is he actually going to hit her? Thought Lucy. Urza had hoped she'll get punishment for her mistake, and she was glad when she saw Naruto walk towards her, but all she felt was a simple flick to her forehead. Wait what was that? Urza asked as she touches her own forehead. That's your punishment just as you ask for cause there's no way in hell I'm actually going hit you Urza Naruto said with a smile which caused Urza to blush. Now's isn't time for that, we need to go and get that idiot. Said Grey. Sign don't worry I'll get him, Naruto said before he then disappeared in a gust of wind. He disappeared. Lucy said surprise. I told you that Naruto is really good with his wind magic said Happy. Currently on the train. Natsu's rage was boiling because some random guy who came up to him and started talking trash about fairy tale, and he was giving him a few punches since Natsu's motion sickness was not allowing him to beat the crap of the punk, however Natsu did manage to hear that he was from Eisenwald. Natsu tried to summon his flames to burn this guy down, but thanks to the train moving Natsu was having a very hard time trying not to be sick. This is so pathetic. You're nothing compared to us Eisenwald wizard said Kajayama. That's shut you up Natsu managed to say. As the train finally stopped moving the fire dragon slayer then summoned up all of his strength and was about to do attack Kajayama, but suddenly out of nowhere, Naruto appeared in front of him in a gust of wind, which surprised both Natsu and Kajayama, and before Natsu could ask a single question, Naruto had beaten him to it. Hey Natsu? Is this guy giving you any trouble? Naruto asked looking at Kajayama who much to Naruto's surprised he recognized him, could he perhaps be related to him? Naruto thought curiously. Nah, I was totally about to kick his ass before you show up Naruto, the train then started to move again causing Natsu's motion sickness to act up again shit. Kaden let's get the hell out of here. Natsu yelled. Get back here you fairy flies. Don't think that you can escape from Eisenwald. Said Kajayama. Eisenwald. That's who we're looking for Naruto thought as he was about to take Kajayama out, but Natsu had ran and jumped through the window, wanting to get off the train as soon as possible, however in his hurry to get out, he completely forgot that the train was moving which caused Naruto to sweat drop. Damn that guy is just so reckless Naruto thought before he followed suit and with flying ability he could land safely on the ground. Just as Naruto hopped out of the train he heard a noise, and as he looked to his side, he saw a car with Urza handling it on the front, and Grey was hanging on the roof for dear life, but Natsu's head collided with Grey sending them both tumbling to the ground. Urza abruptly stopped the car not far away, while well, nature landed safely not too far from the ground. Damn it. What the hell was that for you punk Grey said while holding his head. Shut up. How could you guys just leave me on the train like that, at least Naruto came back for me, Natsu said while he was holding his head. My apologies but I am glad that you both are alright, Urza said as she held Natsu's head to her chest however she ended up bashing Natsu's head against her armor. By the way Natsu who was that guy you were fighting with back there and Naruto asked curiously. Like hell I know. He said his name was Kajayama and I was beating him up because he insulted Fairy Tail. Damn Eisenwald Praga. Before Natsu could finish she was slapped in the face by Urza. You idiot. That's the guild we're after. Why didn't you guys stop him? Urza shouted angrily. I had to go after Natsu when he jumped out the window, Naruto said, hoping that Urza wouldn't hit him as well. It's my first time hearing about this. So what gives? Natsu shouted. I explained everything on the train, weren't you two listening Urza scolded. Well you never mentioned this Kajayama guy, and Natsu was unconscious because you knock him out, said Naruto. You said he was at the train right? We need to hurry. 
Urza said while getting back on the magic mobile and linked something to her forearm that was connected to the car. What did that guy look like? Gray asked. The FFT, nothing special Natsu said. He wore white clothing and had black hair that was put into a ponytail, and the kinda reminds me of a pineapple, said Naruto. I saw him carrying some kind of flute. It had a skull with three eyes though Natsu said. Three-eyed skull. Ugh that's creepy Gray said. The flute with a three-eyed skull. Oh no Lucy said fearfully. What's the matter Lucy? Happy asked. I thought it wasn't real that it was just a story, but that flute is the cursed song lullaby it uses death magic Lucy exclaimed. What? Urza said in shock. The cursed song? Does it use some kind of incantation? Gray asked. I've only read some books about it but there are some deadly forbidden magic that isn't allow. Lucy asked. Yes, black magic, it will kill anyone whomever it is used on Urza explained. Lullaby is even worse than that Lucy grimly said. What do you mean? Ezra asks worriedly. I read in a book that it's not just black magic it's death magic, meaning it won't just one person but a lot of people, Lucy said worried. We need to get straight to the next station right now. Urza ordered. At Ashinaba train station. In Ashinaba there is a magic mobile speeding towards the train station with Urza Scarlet at the wheel, and with Grey hanging on the roof along with Naruto somehow able to stand on the roof perfectly still, Lucy and Happy were sitting in the passenger seats with Natsu looks like he was going to die because of his motion sickness. Um, I feel like there's something you need to know Lucy Happy pondered. Oh what is it? Lucy asked. I can't remember, Happy said, causing Lucy to sweat drop. Ezra. You should slow down. You're going to run out of magic before we even get there. Gray yelled with concern in his voice. I don't care, the lives of innocent people are in danger, and we don't know what our Eisenwald plans are looking at Gray. Beside I have all of you to land a hand in the battle, said Ezra. Don't worry Ezra. We're backing you up in this battle, said Naruto. At this everyone speed up to get to the train station of Ashinaba, in five minutes they managed to get near the train station, and it was surrounded by a big amount of people, Ezra was moving over the people to get to the staff of the train station to talk. Urza then walks up to one of the train staff, we are wizards from the fairy tale guild, tell us what's going on here, said Ezra. The train stuff was about to reply, but Urza head bumped him knocked him, he went towards another of the staff asking him the same thing, but before he was knocked out as well, everyone was looking at her with a sweat drop. She really wants an answer right away doesn't she? Lucy asked exasperatedly. That's how she always is said Naruto. Finally understanding her are ya? Grace said. Eisenwald is inside. Come on let's hurry. Urza shouted. Everyone ran inside the station, and Lucy was having a bit of a hard time having to carry Natsu alone the way. The group of army soldiers raided earlier, but they haven't yet to come back, Urza said as she ran, as they arrive at some stairs, and we all stopped for a second. As there were soldiers were lying down unceremoniously everywhere. Naruto closed his eyes and expanded his senses, and he was able to sense their energy, meaning that they were alive but just barely. We're up against mages, there's no way a military platoon would be able to handle them, Urza said afterwards everyone continued up the stairs and arrived at where Eisenwald were at. So the fairy flies did come I knew it, Eriger said, revealing himself. The FFT he looks just like a punk from the street, hell his whole entire squad of lackeys do as well. Naruto thought with a smile. There's there's so many Lucy said worried. You? You're Eriger the death god aren't you Ezra asked, and Eriger just chuckled. Natsu? Come on. You gotta wake up. Lucy said trying to wake Natsu up. Bam flies because of you Eriger is mad at me. A familiar voice said angrily that Naruto looked over to the source and saw the same guy that was on the train who Natsu punched. Hey I got a question for you, are you related to Shikamaru Nara from the Lamia Scale Guild? Naruto asked curiously. Yeah I am, he's my older brother my name is Kajayama Nara, said Kajayama. Yep a version of Shikamaru exists in this story where he's Kajayama's older brother and a member of Lamia Scale. I'm planning on bringing other Naruto characters where the jutsus that they use in Naruto will be basically the same, but are magic. Hey I know that voice Natsu said while struggling to his knees. What's your plan on using lullaby? Urza asked. Ha. You don't know eh? Eriger then flew upwards. He's hovering just like what Naruto does, Lucy said, surprised. He's using wind magic said happy. We're at a train station, and what do all train stations have? Eriger asked smugly. No your plan is to broadcast it in this town, Ezra exclaimed. Thousands of people are gathered outside this train station here right now, it will broadcast lullaby loud enough, even to the entire city, as well haha <laughs> Eriger explained. You're really going to involve all those innocent lives in all of this, Urza asked angrily. We are simply cleaning up those who live by having rights and being ignorant to those who don't. We don't need a world of people who are oblivious, and so I, the Grim Reaper, have come to punish them all. 
With death. Said Eriger. Even if you do that you won't get your rights back Lucy said, and besides, you guys were kicked out as an official guild because you were doing terrible things. At this point, power is all we want. With power, we can wipe out our past and change the future. Eriger bellowed. I think he needs to be wrapped up in a straight jacket, Naruto said to himself. What a pity you fairy flies, all of you are going to die this instant. Said Kajayama. He then touched the ground and his shadow came out at D headed towards Naruto and the others, and arms made out of shadows came out from it and we're about to attack them. He uses shadow magic just like Shikamaru Naruto thought however he wasn't worried about Kajayama's attack. Because Natsu had managed to counter them with his fire dragon slayer magic just in time. You. Kajayama said angrily. Yeah I recognize you, you're that guy who attacked me back on the train, Natsu said. Natsu? Lucy exclaimed. Now this looks interesting, I think it's about time we go wild. Natsu smirked. Just don't end up destroying the train station Natsu or Master isn't going to be pleased Naruto said. P, I leave these flies to you all, Eriger said before disappearing inside the station. Natsu, Gray. You two go after him. Ezra said. Hub. Both said, they looked at each other. If the both of you work together, then Eriger won't stand a chance. Ezra said to them, Lucy, Naruto and I will stay here and take care of the rest of the Dark Guild members. Natsu and Grey just kept glaring at each other, are you two listening? Said Ezra. W we're going. Grey panicked. Hey I sir Natsu said before we and Grey went ahead inside the station, following Eriger. I'm following after them. Rayul said before leaping on a ledge with vines shooting from his fingers. I'm going too. I have to get back at that pink haired bastard. Kajayama said before disappearing into the shadows. We'll follow Natsu and Grey after we're finished up here Urza said. Us against all of them? Lucy said worriedly. Are you sure you're able to fight? It looked like you put quite a bit of power to get us here, Naruto asked concerned. Of course I can Ezra said, then brought out her hand and out came a sword. Whoa a sword appeared. Lucy said surprisingly. Alright let's being Naruto said as he put his hands in his pockets and then suddenly a large gust of wind flew past him hitting all the dark guild members and sending them flying. Then Naruto just disappeared and reappeared right in front of the group of Dark Guild members in an instant startling them. What the? He was just standing there a second ago. He's super fast as well. Would you just hurry it up? Said Naruto. Ha! Ah, he's just one guy, kill him. The group of Eisenwald members change at Naruto with their weapons in their hands, and Naruto just stands there with a bored expression on his face. Off with your head. An Eisenwald member shouted, swinging an axe to chop off Naruto's head, however Naruto grabbed the blade and crushed it with his bare hand, and with a simple wave from his left hand, it summoned another, but an even stronger large gust of wind, sending more Eisenwald members flying. Who's next I don't got all day. Naruto said, sounding bored. Wow his control over his wind magic is incredible, Lucy said amazed. I Naruto has perfect control over his magic to the point where it's simple as moving a armor and leg, Happy explained. You piece of shit. Come on. It's only just one guy. More Eisenwald members charged at the male fairy tail member, who just casually walked towards them. Then in a burst of speed Naruto disappeared as he changed at them and immediately punched another one in the stomach, sending him flying back. He then kicked another one of the side, backhanded another, kicked several in the stomach, delivered uppercut, swept their feet and spun them around and throwing them aside, some smashing into the walls. The enemies were flying in every direction from the barrage of attacks, rinse and repeat with anyone else's, trying to harm the member of Fairy Tail. And NG. What the hell is he? What do we do? We can't land a single hit on this guy. This is so boring, I thought you lot would at least put up a better fight than this Naruto said, as he casually walked forward at one side of the Dark Guild group they were backing away fearfully. Come on. Let's get the other two. They're just girls A members elsewhere said. That caught the attention of both Ezra and Lucy who broke their gaze over at. Wow, they are even more stupid than I thought. If they think that Urza and Lucy are weak just because they are girls, Naruto thought as he sent another enemy flying. Ha. Ah. Ezra charged forward with her sword ready and with a powerful swing Urza knocked out several members. She charged again and with a couple slashes, more were blow away. Arg. Take this. Several Eisenwald members charged their magic and aimed it at Urza who leaped in the air dodging the blast, she switched her sword to bring out a spear. She swung her spear and took out more of her opponent. Then she switched from spears to dual wield two swords in an instant, taking out more enemies. This woman's requipping is so fast Bayard said. Equip? Lucy wondered. It's her magic. It's similar to yours. She has another personal space where she stores her armors and weapons and she can summon them at her disposal, Happy explained. That's amazing Lucy said in awe. Urza is just getting started though. Happy said. The Ezra Karaka cry out. 
Alright. I think it's time I help out too. Lucy exclaimed. She reached into her small bag and pulled out a golden key. Open the gate of the crab. Cancer. In the golden light, out came a person appeared the celestial spirit Cancer. Let's take them with style said Lucy. Okay baby. Cancer said before he charged forwards with his scissors in hand and used them to cut the enemy's weapons and to their shock, their hair as well, effectively knocking them out. Not bad they're as complicated while holding an axe. He seems useful Naruto said, and without even looking he sent another enemy flying. Yes. Score one for me. Lucy said excitedly. However the way he says baby it's rather insulting, Urza said next, which caused Lucy to go onto her knees in depression, and cancer disappeared. There's still a lot here no choice, I'll have to finish things up here, Ezra said then her body was engulfed in a glowing light. Woo. Her armor is coming off. What a show. An Eisenwald member said. Whoa. What is she doing? Lucy exclaimed. Not only can Urza equip her weapons, but her specialty lies within her armor that changes and enhances her abilities that only she can use. It's called the Night Happy exclaimed. I wonder which armor she going to re-equip into Naruto said glanced where the light was, and it was gone, Urza was now donning in a new armor known as Heaven's Wheel Armor, which has four white wings sticking out from her back, she wore a sliver headband with outward wings, her bust, arms and legs armored in silver, and wore a white skirt with the top of it armored as well. Her Heaven's Wheel Armor. Swords that were floating in a circle behind her started rotating rapidly, and she ascended. You're mine. A Eisenwald member shouted, swinging his sword at Naruto, who just dodged once again and punched the member in the face, knocking him out without even looking at him, as Naruto just continued to watch over what Urza was about to do. Dance, my swords. Urza gestured and the swords were spinning more rapidly. She she's. Karaka tried say. Circle swords. A ring of swords were launched to a majority of her enemies. Wiping them out. Whoa she got almost all of them in one strike. Lucy said in awe. Damn it. I'll take you out. Take this. Bayard changed at Urza with his hands glowing. It really is her. Urza Scarlet the strongest woman in fairy tale and the queen of the fairies. Titania. Karaka exclaimed. But the swing of one of Ezra's swords, she took out Bayard in an instant, sending him crashing to the ground. Well it looks like she wants to finish things up here quickly, oh well, Naruto said facing his own set of enemies, here's a goodbye present from me. The light blue magic seal appeared in front of Naruto. Wind blades shower. Naruto creates dozens of blades compassed solely of compressed solid wind, which he then sent at the remaining Eisenwald members which slashed them and knocking them out. Wind Blade Shower is a spell used by Yuno from Black Clover. And that's Naruto Redgrave. The Sky Emperor of Fairy Tale. Karaka exclaimed. Wow he took out all those enemies like it was nothing, Lucy said in amazement. Impressive as always Naruto Urza said while glowing in a light again and reverted back to her heart crew's armor. No way I can do this. I'm getting out of here. Karaka said before he ran inside the station with a trail of dust. He might be going after Eriger, Lucy, can you stop him? Urza asked. Then me Lucy said, pointing at herself. Just go. Urza glared at her. I am going. Lucy said picked up dust as she ran as well following the enemy with Happy following her. Just as Lucy and Happy had left Urza wobbled and she was about to fall over, until a hand touched her shoulder gently, she looked over to her side and saw Naruto supporting her. Now what was that being fine earlier? Naruto teased. My apologies I guess the magic mobile took more out of me than I had thought, Urza said, panting. Everyone else do you best Ezra thought. Her eyes widened at remembering what Eriger said earlier, I'm fine now. Come on. We need to warn the people outside about what Eriger is about to do. Naruto nodded and they went upstairs. When they reached a balcony on the second floor, Urza reached for a megaphone and started speaking to it. Everyone. This station is overrun by dark wizards. They're planning to use a deadly spell to kill everyone here. If you value your lives, get as far away as you can. Urza shouted. It took a moment for her words to sink in, and moments later, everyone ran away from the train station. Do you think the others are doing fine? Naruto asked. We are fairy tale, it will only be a matter of time before we come out winning Urza said. Ha, hey, you're right. I'm sure they'll kick some ass said Naruto. But just then, the wind started to pick up, and the next thing they saw in front of them was pure wind, obscuring their vision of the city. The wind barrier thought Naruto. Ha 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 ha. Unfortunately for you guys I've wasted enough time here, Eriger said outside of the wind barrier. Eriger? Ezra shouted, running up to the wall of wind, when she tried to pry out of there with her elbow, it only pushed her back. Urza? Naruto shouted worried as he caught her, Urza clutched her elbow which had scratches and blood coming from it. Try that again and you'll end up being ripped to shreds, I've always wanted to fight both of you at least once, but this is the time that I can't waste any longer, said Eriger. What's the meaning of this? 
You aren't going to broadcast lullaby here, Urza exclaimed. HMPH I must be going now, by the time you catch up it'll be all over. Ha ha ha. Eriger said before he flew away from the city. Damn it. What is their true goal? Urza muttered under her breath as she gritting her teeth in anger. But Naruto and Urza. Urza, I'll stay here and deal with the wind barrier while you go and get everyone else together, said Naruto. Are you sure that you are able to take the barrier down? Urza asked. Just trust me, now go Naruto ordered. As soon as Urza left Naruto turned his attention back onto the wind barrier, and he then walked up to it, but stopped before it could cut him. Okay let's deal with this Naruto thought as he opened his mouth, and just like how Natsu eats flames, Naruto began devouring the air from the wind barrier, however he then stopped. This is going to take forever, Naruto said to himself before he formed a ball of pure magical energy in his right. Basengan. Naruto called out as he slammed the ball of pure magical into the, the wind barrier, which caused it to be dispersed. There it's done, now to find everyone else Naruto thought as he has his sensing ability to locate Urza and the others, and it didn't take him long however, when he got there he saw that Kajayama was hurt, and there was a girl with pink hair wearing a maid outfit. Hey guys I've just finished breaking the wind barrier, we're free to go said Naruto. Alright good job Naruto now let's get moving said Urza. Um guys, who's this? Naruto asks curiously looking at the pink haired maid. This is here my newest celestial spirit Virgo, it turns out after Natsu, Happy and I had taken down Duke Everloo his contract with her ended, so she gave Happy her key to give to me, so that we can form a contract, Lucy explained happily, as she now had another golden celestial spirit key. Hey guys, where have Natsu and Happy gone? Grey asks curiously. What? Those idiots. They must have gone after Eriger. We got to catch up with them. Urza shouted angrily. It's alright I got an idea so let's go, Naruto said before he then saw that Grey was picking up Kajayama by the waist. Grey what are you doing? Naruto asked. We can't just leave him here, said Grey. Fine you lot catch up while I will go ahead, Naruto said before a gust of wind surrounded him, and then he was gone. I guess he's going after Natsu, happy and arrogant by himself, said Grey. It's alright Naruto is a lot faster, and he will reach Natsu, happy and arrogant quicker, said Urza. Arrogant? Eriger was flying above the railroad heading towards Clover Town. he felt a gust of wind, and then he was shocked when he saw Naruto appeared out of nowhere, and he was glaring at Eriger. So one of you flies managed to catch up with me, said Eriger. Yep Naruto said simply as he didn't want to waste any words on someone like Eriger, and with his hand still in his pockets, a sudden powerful slash of wind came right after Eriger, who barely managed to dodge. That was wind magic. I didn't see him cast any spells, as his control over wind magic that powerful. Eriger thought in shock. You're not the only one who can use wind magic. Eriger said as he used his side then made slash of wind of his own at Naruto however, just as it was about to reach Naruto, a magic seal appeared in front of him, and suddenly another slash of wine came, and it went right through Eriger's slash of wind, and headed straight at Eriger. What the? Eriger said in shock as he dodged it again. This is going nowhere, Naruto said as he lifted his right arm with an open palm, then a magic seal appeared above Eriger. Hurricane Fist. Before Eriger could do anything a light blue magical seal appeared above him, and then a large fist made out of wind was formed which hit Eriger sending him crashing into the ground, leaving Eriger unconscious, and the lullaby flute falling out of his pocket. Well that was boring, Naruto said to himself as he looked down at the defeated Eriger. Just then Naruto spotted Natsu and Happy flying with Natsu holding on to Happy while using his feet like rockets with his fire magic to increase their speed, and as they landed they were shocked when they saw Naruto just standing there. Huh. What the? How the heck did you get here before us Naruto? Natsu asked curiously. I use my wind magic to get here quickly, Naruto explained. Okay, but then how did you beat Eriger before we even got here? Happy asked curiously. It wasn't that hard as I'm far better at wind magic than him, said Naruto. Ah oh man, I was hoping for a fight, Natsu said, sounding disappointed. Naruto. Natsu. Happy. Hearing Lucy's voice they turned to see the magic car drive up to them before stopping as everyone got out of the vehicle. Yo, Naruto said with a wave. So you managed to Eriger, said Urza. I Naruto managed to beat us here and defeated Eriger before we even arrived, said Happy. I knew you could do it, Naruto, Urza said while smiling as she never doubted him. He beat Eriger that quickly. Kajayama thought in shock. Wow, that's awesome. Lucy said amazed. It's not fair, I wanted to kick his ass. Natsu moaned. It's a good thing that Naruto beat you here or Eriger would have just beaten you, great test. Shut up. I'll have you know that I would have beaten Eriger with ease as well. Natsu shouted. Yeah right, Grace scoffed. While everyone was distracted, Kajayama managed to get hold of the lullaby flute. Aha lullaby is mine. You shouldn't let your guard down, Kajayama shouted before disappearing into the shadows. 
He's disappeared completely, said Naruto. TCH. My best guess is that he's heading for Clover Town at the Guildmasters meeting to complete their mission, said Urza. Well what are we waiting for, if we stay here move time we won't know what will happen, said Grey. Everyone gets in the magic mobile quickly, said Naruto. At this everyone rushed in the magic mobile, and Naruto did the same thing as before, Naruto concentrated a few seconds to locate magic to search for a large gathering of strong energy up ahead, and once he found it a gust of wind surrounded them, and everyone in the magic mobile had vanished. At Clover Town. Outside the Guildmasters meeting building. As Naruto and the others reappeared not too far from their own Guildmaster Makarov, who was talking with Kajayama. Master? Said Urza. I bet Master was reading one of those dirty magazines out here before Kajayama showed up, Naruto thought with a sweat drop. Gramps, said Natsu. Now now, there's no need to rush in, just watch, said a man who was none other than Bob the guild master of another wizard guild Blue Pegasus. Oh my you guys are sure pretty cute Bob said, causing Naruto, Natsu and Grey to pale and quickly back away from him. Nope, 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 nope Naruto thought repeatedly. W who's he? Lucy said, freaking out. Master Bob. Blue Pegasus's master said Ezra. He's the master of Blue Pegasus Lucy said in shock. Oh my Urza you have grown up into such a lovely woman haven't you said Bob. As Naruto turned his attention back to Makarov and Kajayama, he then saw that Kajayama was about to put the lullaby flute in his mouth. Eyes look, said Naruto. No, Master Makarov, Urza said with concern and tone. Calm down there Makarov's taking care of it, said the new person who was Goldmine, the guild master of Quattro Cerberus. Master Goldmine, said Ezra. The Quattro Cerberus master, said Lucy. As everyone continued to see the scene in front of them they saw that Kajayama was sweating furiously. Nothing will change you know, Makarov said, causing Kajayama's eyes to widen. The weak will always remain weak, people are weak to begin with, being alone doesn't make you feel safe. That is why guild exists, that is also why, we have comrades to depend on so we can walk together in order to live a strong life. The clumsy ones will run into more walls than the other. It may take longer for them as well. But if you believe in tomorrow and push yourself, you can naturally make it though. You'll be able to live to the fullest and smile all the way, so that ridiculous flute won't help at all, Makarov finished with a grin. Just then, Kajayama dropped the flute and fell on his hands and knees. I give up. Said Kajayama. Master. Ramps. Oh what are you doing here? Makarov said, surprised. Your speech was wonderful master, it touched deeply into my heart Urza said, hugging Makarov however she just ended up slamming his head against her chest piece of her armor. Ramps. You were amazing. Said Natsu. A-H-A. Ahahaha. You mages don't have the spine. No matter, I'll just have to do it by myself. The lullaby flute shouted. Purple sparks were flying everywhere, and it was coming from the lullaby flute, and in a binding flash, it was no longer a flute. It is now an extremely tall beast that has three eyes, two legs, two arms and one head, and there are many cutouts in its body. Ah it's, that lullaby. Lucy shouted. Way to state the obvious Lucy said happy. It's huge. Now my well this won't go very well, said Master Bob. What is that thing? Aragra never said anything about a monster, Kajayama shouted as beads of sweat rolled down his troubled face, thinking that his former guild master purposely withheld this information from them. It looks like a demon from the Book of Zareph. It appears this monster is Lullaby's true form. This living magic is Zareph's doing said goldmine. magic. Lucy said incredulously, Zareph's been dead for hundreds of years, how is this possible? Why would his magic suddenly show up here? Naruto gazed down as panicked cries filled the forest. People were running for their lives hoping to get as far away from the beast as possible. The once proudly courageous Fiori soldiers were now trembling, their knees buckling as the monster gazed down upon them. So this is one of his creations is it Naruto thought, narrowing his eyes. You all look delicious. I'll devour all of your souls. Lullaby bellowed. You can eat souls. Hey are they tasty Natsu asked wide-eyed. Do I look like I know what they taste like Grey shouted. Naruto. Natsu. Gray. Let's go. Everyone else stands back. Urza commanded. Urza, wait I'll handle this myself Naruto said, shocking everyone while he walked towards Lullaby. Naruto, are you sure? Urza asked concern as she looked at Naruto. Urza it's alright as Naruto has a trick up his sleeve for something like this, Makarov said with a grin. You plan on taking me all by yourself? Lullaby mocked. Well I am meant to after all said Naruto. Oh and why's that? Lullaby asks mockingly. Because you're what I am supposed to slay, said Naruto. Before Lullaby could respond Naruto disappeared and reappeared in the middle of the air right in front of Lullaby's face, and then he inhaled a lot of air, and then said his spell. Sky Devil's Rage. 
Naruto releases a large quantity of air from their mouth in the form of a black and dark red tornado-like blast, and his attack right into Lullaby's face damaged Lullaby, while also knocking him down and away from everyone else. Amazing. He was able to knock Lullaby down with just one attack. That wizard is strong. While the other guild master commenting about Naruto's strength Natsu, Grey, Lucy, Urza and Happy just stare in shock at what Naruto had done with Makarov grinning behind them. That was like Natsu's fire dragon roar attack, but it was made out of wind. Said Lucy. Yeah. What the hell was that? Natsu shouted. That my children is Naruto's true magic said Makarov. Is true magic? Urza asked curiously. You see Naruto's true magic is called Sky Devil Slayer Magic, and it's a lot like Natsu's Fire Dragon Slayer Magic, which was created to slay dragons, Naruto's magic however was created to slay demons like Lullaby Makarov explained. But how come whenever we saw Naruto use his magic before it looks like any other wind magic, but now it's black and dark red? Grey asks curiosity. Well you see Naruto has also mastered normal wind magic to enhance his Sky Devil Slayer Magic greatly Makarov explained. To enhance his magic. Lucy asks curiosity. Think of it this way there are many wind magic spells in the world, and Naruto can perform those spells, but he can also use them with his Sky Devil Slayer magic to make them far stronger, and especially against demons, said Makarov. Oh that makes sense. They all thought well it did make Urza and Lucy think about maybe they should learn another magic where Urza thought she could learn gun magic from Alzac and Biska, and Lucy thought that maybe she could learn light magic, as she had read that many celestial wizards learn that type of magic, while Natsu thought about learning normal fire magic, perhaps from Macau well Grey. Thought that it was time for him to learn the other half of his magic, as with all forms of maker magic, there are two halves with him already knowing static ice make, where the user inanimate objects, such as weapons and affecting the environment around them, while the other half is dynamic ice make, where the user focuses on creating animated ice sculptures. Usually in the form of living creatures and control their movement. Why you little insect? Lullaby roared as it was getting up and swiping his right fist at Naruto, but as it did Naruto just like Urza, made a sword appear showing that he was also capable of using requip, but Naruto's sword was a unique as like Urza. Naruto collects weapons, but he has no way near as many as Urza, as all of Naruto's weapons were special, where each of them had a unique enchantment, making them far stronger. The blade is a pitch black sword with trims of grey, it has a black hilt connected to a handguard that drops down on the right side, and attached to this elongated area of the handguard is part of blade. The sword that Naruto has is the one Kurito from Sword Art Online, which is called Elucidator because I think it looks cool. Naruto then channeled his magic through it and formed a black and dark red wind surrounding the blade, then in a flash of speed, he managed to slice through Lullaby's arm multiple times cutting off chunks of it. My arm. You insect. Lullaby roared in anger. Naruto using his wind magic to fly then in a blink of an eye, managed to strike Lullaby multiple times. I have had enough of you. Lullaby roared, getting up as his screeches were heard all throughout the area. My ears. Lucy shouted as she and everyone else covered their ears. Damn that thing is loud. Grey shouted. And annoying. Natsu griped. No doubt. Happy agreed. It's preparing its deadly song. Said Urza. Now all of you fools will die. Lullaby shouted about to play his tune. Only for it to come out barely like faint whispers. What the? Lucy said confused. Nothing happened. Said Happy. What's going on? Why can't I play my melody of death? Lullaby wondered. It's because of all those holes I put in your body, Naruto said while waving his finger. Thanks to all of my attacks I made it difficult for you to play your little song. All that build up for this? Talk about a letdown Lucy said, shaking her head. No doubt, Grey said. I'm really disappointed, Natsu said, sighing. You dare mock me, Lullaby shouted walking towards them. You're damn right I do Naruto said as he lifted his right arm and had an open palm, then formed a ball of energy which he then channeled his Sky Devil Slayer magic into it, causing it to change color and form spinning blades that appear around. Sky Devil Race and Shuriken. Naruto then tossed the Race and Shuriken at Lullaby where it spun in the air at high speeds, once it made contact with a wooden demon, a huge explosions of wind formed around Lullaby, the winds were strong enough to reach the spectators, and once it was over, everyone saw that Naruto's attack had completely destroyed Lullaby. All right. Naruto beat him Natsu shouted, grinning as he raised up his fist up. Yeah he did it. Happy said laughing. That was awesome Naruto. Lucy shouted, smiling. Haha well done my boy Makarov said with a grin. That was amazing, Bob said grinning. He made defeating one of Zeref's demon look so easy, Goldmine said smirking. I can't believe how incredibly strong this guy is. Kajayama said it was amazing as Naruto turned around to everybody and smirked at them and gave everyone a thumbs up. Are all fairy tale wizards as strong as him? 
Naruto then made his sword disappear before he himself disappeared, and then he reappeared where everyone else was at. Naruto, that was so awesome. How did you do that? Natsu asked excitedly. I that was amazing, said Happy. That was very impressive, you've managed to defeat Lullaby on your own, Urza said before she gave Naruto a kiss. Couldn't have done worse than us, said Grey. What was that attack just now? Lucy asks curiously. Other guys, calm down for a second, I need my space, Naruto said with a smile, while rubbing the back of his head. Standing outside Fairy Tail Guild Hall. It has been a couple days since the event at Clover Town, where Naruto had revealed to everyone that his true magic is actually Sky Devil Slayer magic, and he had destroyed the demon lullaby single handy, and afterwards when they were all heading back to Magnolia Naruto had to deal with Natsu who wanted to fight him. With him using his fire dragon slayer magic against Naruto's sky devil slayer magic, but after scary look from Ezra, it made him stop immediately. Right now all the members of Fairy Tail were standing outside their guild hall in a circle, and within the circle were two people who were none other than Urza and Natsu, who were about to have their fight which Natsu asked for and Urza accepted. They really are doing this, Lucy said as she just arrived with Grey and forced herself though the crowd to get a good view of the fight. They're always serious about fights, if not then they won't be manly. Said Elfman. But Urza is a girl. Yufufu, said Mira. He, more like a female monster, Mikau said with a smile, only to be smack on the back of his head by Naruto. Wouldn't two people from Fairy Tail's strongest team wreck everything that we're seeing here right now? Lucy asked worriedly. Huh? Strongest team? Nice, what kind of idiot told you that joke Lucy Gray snorted, but just then Mira ran up to Naruto and placed her face on his chest and began crying. Though you're not an idiot Mira Gray said trying to calm Mira down, but then he was smack on the back of his head by Naruto. Smooth moves Gray said Lucy. I'll hand it to Natsu and Gray they are tough little dude, but neither of them are even come close to being the strongest there are guys in fairy tale, who are stronger than both of them combined, like this guy Elfman said, and as he did Lucy couldn't help but glance over at Naruto who was standing next Kana. But calling Urza the strongest woman in the guild is pretty much a safe bet said Levy. As for the guys it's pretty much a tough call, but I would put my money on either Mystigan, Naruto or Laxus, Jet said, well he accidentally missed out both Master Makarov and a certain other member, who was currently on a long job request. All I meant was that the four of them work well together, and they have the best team chemistry in all of fairy tale, Mira said while crying. Okay and this is coming from the same person who sent me on a mission to keep Natsu and Grey from killing each other when Urza or Naruto wasn't around, said Lucy. In any case, this fight should still be interesting to watch at least, Elfman said grinning. You really think so? I still think Urza is gonna win by a landslide Grey said. Urza is going to win that's for sure, but I don't think it's going to be that easy said Naruto. When was the last time we tested our magic against each other? Urza asked. That was back then. This is now. I ain't a kid no more Urza, and this time I know I can beat you. Natsu exclaimed. I see, well then Urza said as she requip, and when the light glowed down, she was in a completely new armor, her red hair was tied in twin ponytails, two black and red wings out of her back. Red, black and orange greaves, gauntlets, and breastplate were worn on her. She wielded a red sword with an orange guard and black hilt. Her flame empress armor eh? Well Natsu's done for said Mikau. Yeah it has the ability to have any fire attack damage by half, said Wakaba. Huh, guess she is taking this fight seriously, said Naruto. Haha, <laughs> the Flame Empress armor, eh? Well then, that just means I can go all out then. Natsu said as he lighted his hands on fire. You may begin. Makarov shouted. Natsu charged at Urza where he threw a punch which she dodged, and then did a slash to stream of fire which Natsu ducked and tried to kick her which Urza sidestepped and slashed again at Natsu, only for him to flip backwards. Urza capitalized his retreat with a kick to the stomach. Natsu already had fire in his mouth and let them out to hit Urza, only for her to move away once again. W wo. This is pretty cool. Said Lucy. Bet it. Pretty fun to watch said Elfman. Hey, I've seen better actually. I'm sure Lucy can agree with me, Gray said while looking over at Naruto. Really? Lucy asked while following his eyes to look at Naruto, and she had a look of recognition, oh that's right. Um? Elfman raised an eyebrow curiously at what the two were talking about. It's nothing really, let's continue to watch the fight, Lucy said as both Natsu and Urza were about to charge at one another, until a loud clap interrupted the whole fight. Huh? Who's that? What happened? Urza and Natsu stopped right in their tracks to see the source of the interruption, and everybody saw a frog person walking towards the two. Everyone please stare right where you are. I am a messenger from the Magic Council bearing two messages the frog lady said. Shit, I can already tell something bad is going to happen, thought Naruto. The Magic Council the petite woman exclaimed. Out here the guy with the long top hat shouted. 
You guys aren't affected by its appearance. Lucy asks somewhat incredulously. The charges of property damage along with 11 other crimes from the Eisenwald incident the other day, Urza Scarlet, you are hereby under arrest. The frog lady said. What? Natsu shouted. Didn't it say two messages? Gray asked. Along with Urza Scarlet, the individual by the name of Naruto Namikas is also hereby under arrest by the order of the Magic Council, said the frog lady frog, and in a moment it finally hit everyone. What? Everyone shouted. Some time later. At the Magic Council headquarters. Naruto was walking behind Urza who was following the frog lady, and they both had handcuffs to prevent them from using their magic. So what do you think they're planning to do to us? Naruto asked curiously. I don't think we're actually in a lot of trouble, said Urza. Really? Asked Naruto. In any case we will oblige, see to our consequence and leave. Said Urza. Sure thing, said Naruto. Suddenly a person appeared in front of frog lady and Urza, causing them both to stop, and then Naruto heard Urza muttered Seagrain. Under her breath. Leaning against a pillar was a young man wearing a white outfit with a tattoo over his right eye and blue hair. It's been quite a while Urza, Seagrain said, please relax, I'm only here in spirit, I'm sending this projection from the meeting said Seagrain. That explains why I can't sense him, but still though there's something about this guy that gives me a bad feeling, Naruto thought narrowing his eyes at Seagrain. In fact, all the wrinkled faces in that courtroom are projections as well. We didn't think it was necessary to be here for such a trivial matter said Seagrain. I see, so you're the one that's behind this farce. Urza responded, and Naruto could feel anger in her voice which made him wondered why. You make me sick. Urza hissed. Now let's be civil Seagrain said with a cocky smirk, then he walked behind Urza. I've always been a staunch supporter of fairy tale, but the elders are worried the blame for Clover's destruction will fall on their laps, you're their scapegoat, said Seagrain. Enough. Urza interjected, turning on the spot. Just a friendly warning, in fact it's another matter altogether I wish to discuss with you, Seagrain said, lifting his hand to touch Urza's chin. At that moment Naruto had enough, so he disappeared and reappeared in between Urza and Seagrain, the redeed stumbling as Naruto pushed her back softly. Don't you lay a hand on one her. Naruto growled, his voice rich with anger. He was face to face with a blue-haired man, and Seagrain could have sworn that he saw Naruto's eye turn red for just a moment, just leave right now. Urza looked at Naruto in surprise, as she has never saw him act so different from the normally peaceful person that she has knew for years. So this is Naruto Namika's I wonder why Ultier is so fascinated with him, thought Seagrain. Seagrain then disappeared and reappeared next to Urza, don't say a word about you know what. For both our sakes. I must join my colleagues on the council. I'll see you both shortly, Seagrain said before disappearing. Naruto glared at the spot where Seagrain stood just moments ago, you know that guy Urza. Naruto asked curiously. Urza flinched for a moment before bringing her attention to her guildmate, still looking ahead with distant eyes. I knew his brother she muttered. Her face turning hard. Naruto then smiled gently down to her. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring up a painful memory Naruto apologized, putting a hand on her shoulder. Urza smiled at Naruto and nodded her forgiveness to the Sky Devil Slayer. A couple minutes later both Naruto and Urza stood before the members of the Magic Council. This courtroom will now come to order. Another frog lady declared. Before us are the defendants Urza Scarlet and Naruto. The frog lady announced. Miss Scarlet you shall go first, please take the stand. Defendant Urza Scarlet. You are accused of the following during the incident with the Dark Guild Eisenwald. Destroying part of Ashibana Station and as well as destroying part of Ryashika's Canyon Railway, the top figure listed. The Guild Master's meeting building wasn't destroyed here. Suddenly the doors behind Naruto and Urza were destroyed in a fiery explosion, and Naruto could already guess who it was, and Naruto had to fight against urge to facip him. God damn it Natsu Naruto thought annoyed. I'm the crazy lady in armor you old timers have been looking for. Natsu shouted. Urza sighed and hung her head in embarrassment while Naruto sweat drop, if you have something against the way me and my guild do things you can fight me. I am the all-powerful Urza. Natsu roared, working his way over to Naruto. PSST, Naruto. He said quietly to his fellow guild member, take Urza and get out of here. Natsu then resumed destroying stuff in the courtroom. I'm truly sorry for this your honor Urza said while bowling with her cheeks red from embarrassment. Naruto sighed heavily before he walked over to Natsu and grabbed him by the fake wig, while him was still cuffed, excuse us, Naruto said before dragging Natsu out of the courtroom and took him to the end of the hallway. Naruto what the hell. I was gonna get you guys out of here. Natsu shouted angrily. No, you weren't Natsu. This was all for show. Honestly, you probably would have made it worse by staying in there, Naruto said while he signed and rubbed his forehead. I don't get it, how? Natsu said which made Naruto then closed his eyes. We weren't really in trouble Natsu said Naruto. 
Onatsu said finally realizing what Naruto was saying to him. Is happy here with you? I can only guess that he came along with you since you got here so fast Naruto asked. Yeah why? said Natsu. Go back to the guild, we'll be back later today okay trust me with you staying here might actually make it longer for us, said Naruto said. Hein but you better be back or else. Natsu said as he started walking away. Naruto sighed one last time again, and then he returned to the courtroom. Sorry about that said Naruto. Later outside the Magic Council building. Naruto and Urza were stuck in the courtroom for a while explaining the events involving Eisenwald and Lullaby. Thankfully all they got was a warning, and now they were heading back to Magnolia. I can't believe him Urza said angrily. I'm just grateful that it is finally over, Naruto said calmly with his hands in his pockets. For now we better head back to the guild hall and tell the master what happened said Urza. But there's no train heading back to Magnolia at this hour said Naruto. Damned it Urza muttered under her breath. But I do know a way to get to Magnolia quickly I use it for missions and stuff, said Naruto. Really how Urza asked curiously. Like this said Naruto. Wind make. Heavenly wind arc. Naruto manifests a gust of wind around himself and Urza, and it took the shape of an arc-like vessel. The floating arc was density enough that Naruto and Urza are able to stand on top of it. So this is how you're able to complete missions so quickly, Urza said as everyone back at Fairy Tail knew Naruto held the record for completing job requests, and after his spell Urza realized that transportation for Naruto wouldn't be a problem. Yep it doesn't cast that much magic to create, and it's able to transport both people and things, said Naruto. Sounds like an extremely useful spell to have I'm actually kind of jealous, said Urza. Why do I get the feeling that she's going to be using me for travel in the future? Naruto thought with a sweat drop. Scene change. Unknown to either Naruto and Urza they were currently being watched through orb by Seagrain, and a pale-skinned woman with dark purple hair and brown eyes, she has a rather voluptuous figure, and she wears a long revealing dress, sporting a striped pattern this woman was Altia or another member of the Magic Council. I don't see why you're so fascinated with him sure, I mean sure he's indeed a talented wizard, but there's nothing truly special about him. Asked Seagrain. You wouldn't understand said Altier. Oh really try me? Seagrain asked getting a bit curious. Years ago when I was just child I saw his true power said Altier. His true power? Seagrain said getting even more curious. You should definitely never ever underestimate Naruto Namikaze because he's far more than what he seems said Altier. The end. If you guys enjoy this part, then please do like and subscribe to my channel. See you all in the next video. Till then, be happy and enjoy your life.